I'm now joined by Brad Brad Scott. Brad is coming off of a, a very close defeat against Claudio Henrique de Silva at UFC Fight Night 38. Brad, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, welcome to you back on, mate. Very glad to be back on. It was nice to finally get a chance to meet you and shake your hand at the arena. I was, I was glad to do that. Yeah, no, yeah, finally nice to put a face, um, put a face to, the, uh, to the voice. So let's let's talk a little bit about the fight. I mean, it was a it was a very strange fight because it was a fight where you easily did the most damage, but with the way the the scoring system is, of course, you you didn't get the decision. What were your thoughts on the fight? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, let's get this one thing straight. The only person to blame was myself. I didn't get this. I didn't stuff or um, force my game plan onto him enough. Although, from watching the fight back and from what I felt in the fight, I easily did a lot more damage than he did. So I was uh, a little bit disappointed with the um, with the outcome. But he did hold me down and do nothing for three minutes of the whole fight. So he's earned some it. Yeah, I mean, you, there's no doubt that you did you did more damage. I mean, in the in the in the first and the third round, there were turning points where, where the eye pokes, from what I could see, and you kind of lost your direction a little bit, and then he was able to take you down and control you. Were you surprised he wasn't warned and had points deducted? Because he, I mean, from what I remember, he poked you in the eye three times. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Three times, I thought, you know, once is bad enough, twice is taking a piss, and three times is a fucking joke. But, you know, that's the first time I've ever been poked in the eye, so... But a lot of it, I think, the biggest thing for me is I'm, I'm a very um, rhythmic fighter. I get into rhythm and, I, you know, I, I get more and more confident. And then you get eye poked and you have time to reset, get his energy back and then go again. So, it, I mean, it's, it's almost felt like you were cheating, but I suppose it is an accidental eye gouge three times. See, I was, obviously I was watching the fight. I thought... You know, it, it, I don't think I'd like to think he didn't do it by on purpose because you, you know you don't want to think of dirty fighters. But he caught you the first time, you let that go. He caught you a second time, he should have been warned the second time. And when he caught you a third time, I was surprised he wasn't deducted a point because it was literally three. It, you know, his hands are out as he's palming you away. He caught you three times in the eye. There's no doubt, is there? One hundred percent, three gouges in the eye. They were bad enough. I had to go for an MRI afterwards. So. Now, during I joined, that, believe it or not, I joined him at the hospital. Yeah. But I was there because he gouged me in the eye. He was there because I smashed his face in. I mean, so. during that second round, you gave him an, an absolute pasting. And, it, and he looked like he had no fight left him, in him. There was one part in the round where it looked like you caught him with a body shot. And I weren't sure whether you thought it was a groin shot. But he kind of, he froze up and kind of backed away. And you didn't want to go in for the kill. Did you think it was an illegal strike? Well, yeah, because I, I turned, you can, you can even see it in my head. I turned the shot over, I couldn't see where it landed. And by the way he went, I thought, oh, shit, I've hit him in the balls. Like, I thought I'd better give him a uh, ton of cover. I looked up at the ref, and the ref was like, no, no, you didn't hit him in the balls. But the ref, after watching it back, I didn't hit him. It was straight across the belly. It was across the belly. I should have gone in for a kill and just finished him up. Should have just gone in for, should have been such a good sportsman. Yeah. Should have gone in there. I mean, in all fairness, he was being the unsportsman, like, Cheating in the first place, saying that I um, hit him in the groin when I, he just really he wanted the best. He was getting his ass kicked. I mean, you really had him on the ropes in that second round. I didn't think he was going to make it out of that second round, and I certainly didn't think he was going to be able to fight in the third. I mean, you know, he took an absolute pacing in that second round. It was so one sided. I mean, it, there was even an argument for, I thought, a 10 8 round. A lot of people were shouting in the, um, in the crowd when I walked out, they couldn't believe I lost. They were like, how was that not a 10 8? How do you not have points taken off? Taking a groin shot, not actually doing any, anything to me at all. But the judges are there to do their weird scoring system. Which is why I like the idea of pride. Yeah. I like the idea of pride. You know, in, in terms of pride, you would have lost. Yeah, lost, if that was badly. Yeah, if that was the pride rules, because they normally base that on damage across the whole fight, not individual rounds. You, you know, you're right. You would have won. You would have got the decision because you caused most damage. I mean, even at the start of the first and the third, you were causing damage, but the the turning point in each of those rounds, of course, was with the eye pokes. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I mean, um, I know my coach went up to Neil Hall after the fight. He was so enraged. Um, John Crouch, the MMA lad, Benson's coach, famously, he went over to uh, Neil Hall and he goes, "Look, you know, I, I know you can't change anything now, but in the future, are you going to take points?" And he said, "No." He goes, at the end of the day, I'm never going to take a point away from someone because it was an accident. It's like, 
you know what I mean? I might start putting my teeth on people back in the future, do you know what I mean? Biting people and stuff. The same sort of thing. I mean, it, it may have been an accident, but, but it happened. And it affects the outcome of the fight in, an, um, in a positive way for him and a negative way for me. It's still, at the end of the day, it's still cheating. There's got to be some kind of guideline. I think there's too much... Because what another ref would have would have would have dealt with that differently. There should be a, a set guideline for the refs where if they do it the once, you know, you 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 kind of warn and play it off. They do it again, you give them a proper warning. They do it a third time. You you know, three times the same foul. There's got to be, you know, even in football, there's repetitive foul. You get a yellow card. There's got to be something, hasn't there? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, what it was, he was getting his ass kicked and he was getting desperate. That's why he started faking the one shot, faking the one shot. And then he was looking for rest at any point. He didn't even deny that you poked me in the eye. He just walked off it into his own corner. The ref didn't even send him to a neutral corner. He walked straight back over to his corner. And then he said, oh, my coach has lost their voices screaming at the ref. It's almost like the ref didn't deserve to be there as such. Yeah. Have you had any contact from the UFC since the fight? Uh, uh, just about an MRI for my shoulder. That was it. And is, is, it, and is your shoulder okay? There's no nothing serious? Have you, you know, you've been scanning we'll everything? Find, we'll find out tomorrow, yeah. We'll find out tomorrow if I need an operation or not, I don't know. And how do you feel? Do you think you will or you're not sure? I think I will, yeah. So how how long are you likely to be out for then before you can get get back in and compete again? Well, nowadays, KL surgery doesn't take long at all, does it? Okay. I mean, guys, you know... You're back training in six weeks, like full on, getting ready for fights, sort of thing. With keyhole surgery, you know, I mean, it's, it's quick. Keyhole's nothing. Just a little penetration in there, sort it out, and then it's done. Oh, excellent. So hopefully you won't be out for too long then? No, I'll be fighting soon. How's, how's your. How's long? How, no, and without, no, no, no tongue in cheek, no jokes. So how's your eye as well from, from the fight? Well, I mean, after the fight, I had, I had double vision. The uh, the first poke was the worst poke. That was the one that gave me a little bit of double vision in the eye. Obviously, I'm not using that as an excuse. I can still see him. He's just big enough target to see while still landing shots left, right, and centre. But it, it didn't really affect my performance. But I did have a little bit of double vision. And then they got, they panicked a little bit and sent me off an MRI straight away. But it was the first poke was the worst. I got poked in both eyes yeah. throughout the fight. So ideally, then, when would you like to get back in, and and who have you got any idea on who you'd like to face? Well, uh, I know what I don't want to do, and it's fight like someone like Claudio Silva again, someone who runs away, and then when he's on top, he's so scared to do anything that he, he does nothing. It's not like he did anything. I just don't want to fight anyone like him ever again. Yeah. Not because he was good, because he was the opposite of good, and that's what makes me more mad. Is I lost to someone who wasn't as good as me, or anywhere near as good as me. Yeah. That's the frustrating thing. I'm never, ever like, bitter about um, defeat, and I normally take it on the chin that yeah, I was beat by the better man. But I genuinely believe I wasn't beat by the better man that night. That's the only thing. And I'm, I'm never like that. That's the first time I've ever been like it. So what what do you take from that? What 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 will you you know what do you learn from that going forward? Um, I think I need to work. I still need to work on my wrestling, but that's an ongoing thing. I've known that for a long time. Yeah, I've been working a lot. Um, I was impressed that I was able to get up at all against someone with, um, I, I took away a lot of positives from it, despite it being a very negative fight. Yeah. I was looking at the positives, trying to improve myself to make martial artists. And, um, I, you know, being able to get up against someone of his level of jiu-jitsu, you know, stuffing as many hit as I did, um, landed as many shots, I took a lot of positives away from it. But, but, the, but the only negatives I could find is how he was able to hold me down and do nothing for as long as he did. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it and how I wasn't able to finish him and uh, cause he, I find that I've never really fought anyone who runs away before yeah and it, it, it's really it's actually a lot harder than what, what you think <laughs> I mean I fought guys if guys stand in front of me I can land big shots all day long yeah. you start running away every time you go to throw a combo he left or if I, if I did land a combo his hands were up in my face poking me in the eye it's more like you need street defence jiu-jitsu than Brazilian jiu-jitsu yeah were you, were you surprised then at his style, the fact that he did kind of be, be we, that he was content to control you on the ground without without kind of looking for anything or improved position, and the fact that when you're on the feet, he was literally, you know, backing up the whole time. Were you surprised at that? Well, yeah, I mean, I've, I've watched, I suppose, just the level of 
level of competition. If you look at his fights beforehand, he fought guys that didn't really have any, like, um, and like they had, like you know, they really had no experience, or they weren't really very well skilled. I mean, even like you know, Professor X didn't do anything. And uh, but if you watch him on the ground, and he was mega aggressive on the ground. So I've been training with loads of top jiu-jitsu guys. Augustus Mendes, Tanquino was one of them. You know, he makes Claudio look like an amateur on the floor. So I've been training with really aggressive guys. And I was practicing getting up. And then when I actually got in there, he wasn't aggressive at all. He tried to do nothing. He made no... He, tried, he didn't try to submit me. He didn't try and isolate an arm or anything. He just held on to me for dear life. It was almost like he was scared. It felt like he was scared to be in there. Do you think it's because he was tired? Because he did seem to... I mean, he took quite a pace in that second round and he did seem to gas. Yeah, but he was pretty much the same in the first round. Oh. And I think what another thing is, when he did try to do something, I got a butterfly and stood up. I got cross grip and stood up. And I think that um, scared him a little bit, and he, you know, because no one else has really done that before to him. No one else has even managed to, you know, get a, get a butterfly hook in the first place. So me getting that, standing back up and punching him in the face, I think that was an awakening, like, welcome to the UFC sort of thing. Yeah, it was. It was a strange old fight because it was one where you definitely did the, you know, I, I would say you definitely did the most damage, but you could just see in that third round, he was literally, he wasn't, he wasn't doing anything, but he was controlling you and it was, it was going to head his, it looked like it was going to head his way. And it was so hard to watch because you had, or in that second round, you had him on the ropes and you were so close to finishing that fight. I remember he took my, he jumped onto my back, but I blocked the hit by putting my hip to the cage. Yeah. So basically, he had no chance of getting a submission. The submission chance was gone. Neil Hall said, Cloudy, you got to do something. And I thought, yeah, Cloudy's going to move now. And then, you know, the ref goes, Cloudy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move you. you got to do something. And I thought, fucking hell, like, you know, do something or split us up because it's going to be like this for the rest of the round. I'm not going to move. I'm the one, you know, I'm stalling it out for a reason. But he was stalling because he was scared of fighting and then on the third time he dropped straight to the floor and then um, he, in all fairness Jiu Jitsu was good in the third round he did manage to go for a knee bar and I was the one who made the mistake and ended up back on my back but even then he didn't try to do anything to uh, finish it was just it was just a very straight I imagine then it was just a very strange and frustrating night I bet you were just glad to get away were you? I, was, I, was, I didn't want to see him ever again like, even when I when he came up to me after the fight, he's like, oh yeah, tough fight. I was like, fuck, really? You got that fight? Like, now I don't think I got hit. That's the only thing um, I was like sour about. I like, normally like, I've been in like, you know, fights where people are trying to finish me. People are trying to actually fight me. That's the first time anyone's just tried, if anything, just, just being in the ring and trying not to get finished. Yeah. Taking me down for, oh, he's got me down. I better get ready to defend and then defend nothing. So... That was the most frustrating thing of the night. Yeah, I can. I can tell from speaking to you, it was a it was a very frustrating night, uh, and it, it was it was hard for me to watch. Cause, I mean, as you know, I'm I'm a big fan of yours. We've interacted quite a bit. Of, uh, you know, we've interacted you. quite a few times. And obviously, I was there to to support support you. So it was hard. It was hard for me to watch. I was gutted to see the result go. You know, the the, the opposite way. I think it was hard for anyone to watch because like one person was trying. To, I always come to fight. I mean, that's like one of the best things about me. I don't care who you are, I'm there to fight. But, but Claudio was like, it was just, he wasn't like, I don't, I don't understand him. I, I don't understand how he can call himself a fighter in doing that. Unless I suppose the nerves could have got to him and he felt he ended up performing. I mean, that could be the case. But it's weird because in his corner, you had John Hathaway, he was an absolute beast. He does come to fight and then, yeah. then you had him in the ring doing nothing. It's just a very weird fight for me. It's the first I've ever come across someone who didn't actually want to fight. Well, like I say, I'm sorry to see the fight go the way it did. Uh, I appreciate you giving me your time and talking about the fight with me. That's fine, mate. No problem. And be before we let you go, Brad, I want to give you a chance to, sh uh, to mention your Facebook and your Twitter. And then uh, anyone you want to thank. I know you've had a lot of people helping you get ready for the fight. Any sponsors? Anybody? Um, um, so thanks for Trojan Fit. Funky Guns, Healthy Nutrition, Bad Boy, Gary Cross, MMA Lab, um, all my other coaches, Dragon Flair, Joe Walden, Andrew Kane, Mark Kent, all of the uh, coaches I've got. Uh, that's pretty much it, really, in terms of sponsorship. And I'm um, looking to fight, I suppose. 
four months. My uh, obviously Twitter, just put my name in Bradley Scott. Put the Facebook and it comes to out. Well, I hope you, I hope we get to see you back in there in four months. I hope the, your keyhole surgery goes well. So good luck with that. Thanks very much, Ray. Uh, and thanks very thank much for your time, Brad. No problem, mate. Thanks very much.